That fierce fighting continues to rage throughout Ukraine. Gunfire raining down on more than a dozen cities, including just outside the capital of Kiev. Russian troops have moved across the border in a number of waves, landing in the port city of Odessa, crossing the border into Kharkiv, the second largest city. Yeah, and joining us right now to weigh in on this more is Elizabeth Shackleford. She's a senior fellow at uh, the of U.S. foreign policy at the uh, Chicago Council on Global Affairs, and she's also a former diplomat with the U.S. Department of State. Thank you so much for coming on. You know, President Biden announced these new sanctions against Russia. What do you think these are going to do? And why, quite possibly, hasn't he directly sanctioned Russian President Vladimir Putin? Well, those are really good questions, and they're being debated by a lot of experts right now. It does seem as though the sanctions that Biden imposed yesterday and that have been imposed by a lot of our allies, similarly, are certainly the strongest that we've done against Russia. Um, but that said, we have left a lot still on the table. The question that I have right now is what are we waiting for in terms of an additional escalation to bring bring more sanctions into force? Um, uh, with, with regard to not sanctioning uh, President Vladimir Putin just yet, that's kind of a little bit of a, of a diplomatic tradition to kind of remain open to uh, you know talks and conversation and discussions and diplomacy in the future. But I don't think that at this stage, President Putin is exactly uh, someone that we've got a lot to negotiate with. Well, let me ask you this. At the top of the hour, we spoke with Congressman Mike Quigley. He is en route to Washington this weekend where they're going to talk about what, if anything, can be done. I want to talk about the humanitarian crisis. Some 5 million Ukrainians, I know that's a fluid number, are fleeing. A lot of them are landing in Poland. What, in your mind, does the U.S. need to do to aid in these NATO nations that will be accepting these refugees? Well, I think the humanitarian crisis, as you said, these numbers are very fluid. It's unclear how many are ultimately going to Lee. And it's actually quite impressive at this stage how many Ukrainians are staying behind to fight. Uh, but I think that the United States should work closely with our NATO allies to ensure that um, there is enough supply and readiness at the border and beyond to be able to assist those who are who are fleeing for their safety. Um, right now, you've seen Poland and other countries prepare significantly because they're expecting those waves to come in. Um, there have also been calls for the United States and other countries to provide emergency visas for family members uh, of United States citizens and citizens in other countries so that they can uh, provide opportunities for those who have people to stay with, uh, that they can go and join them in a safer location. And well, I think that we have a very strong um, requirement to, to help and assist on that. Well, about 137 soldiers so far among the dead. Civilians are also dying. I mean, how long do you think Ukraine can keep up this fight uh, against Russia? That is the question of the hour. I mean, at this stage, I think a lot of people expected that the initial blitzkrieg by Russia in the first 24 hours was going to go further than it did. Not further physically. I mean, going on Kiev is certainly um, huge. But uh, there's been a lot more resistance from the Ukrainian military. Uh, I've heard this morning, and of course, these are very fast moving facts, so I'm not sure where things stay, stay now. But uh, Russia had taken over the largest, uh, the large airport outside Kiev, and that has been taken back now, um, at least last I checked by the Ukrainians. You had a very significant strategic uh, bridge in the southern part of the country that had been taken over by the Russians. The Ukrainians have pushed them back. So the Ukrainians seem certainly willing to fight. This gets back to where sanctions can help. If we can, if we can basically make sure that the Russian government doesn't have access to Western funds to help continue funding its war effort, that's the kind of thing that we can do to really help um, slow Russia down and give Ukraine the opportunity to fight. But I make no mistake about it, they are certainly outmanned and outgunned. Elizabeth Shackelford, Senior Fellow of U.S. Foreign Policy at the Chicago Council on Global Affairs. Uh, a lot to talk about. Um, maybe we can have you on again in the days to come. But thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.